Hey guys, we're going to be doing the 9.4 notes today, rhombi and kites. So students will be able to name regular polygons by the sides, and students will be able to find the area of a regular polygon. So let's go ahead and talk about our properties of a rhombus. So a rhombus is a parallelogram where all four sides are congruent. So very similar to a square, all four sides are congruent. The diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular bisectors. Perpendicular of one another. And the diagonals, or diagonals and angles, uh, this one I'm pretty sure was printed out incorrectly. So the diagonals and the angles, um, the diagonals bisect one another. We have that perpendicular bisector. They also, um, diagonals bisect the angles. So as we can see here, the angles are cut in half, right? They're cut into two perfect spots. Same thing with over here. So they aren't necessarily equal to one another, um, but diagonally they will be this way. So all four of those angles will be congruent to one another. So let's go ahead and put some of these properties into play. So number one, I have two sides and remember in a rhombus all four sides are exactly the same so I'm gonna have 5y minus 6 equals 2y plus 3 so we'll go ahead and subtract 2y from both sides I'll get 3y minus 6 equals 3 add 6 3y equals 9 then when we divide by 3 y will equal 3 Sorry, that ended up being a little crooked at the end. Okay, so then we can go ahead and do the same thing with number two. So once again, we know that all of the sides are going to be congruent. I can't, however, solve for y quite yet because I don't know what one of the sides are, but I can solve for x. So let's go ahead and start with solving for x. Once we find that, we can find y. So 5x minus 24 is equal to 3x minus 2. Go ahead and subtract 3x, and we'll add 24 to both sides as well. So we have 2x is equal to 22. Then if we go ahead and divide by 2, I know that x equals 11. All right, now that we know what x is, I am able to solve for y. So I know that all these sides are equal. So if I take one, let's do 3x minus 2. I know that equals y. So this is why I had to solve for x first, because if I just created this equation, I can't go anywhere and I can't solve for either x or y. But since I know that x equals 11, I can say that 3 times 11 minus 2 will give me y. So that's 33 minus 2, which is 31. Or, yeah, 31 equals y. All right, I want you guys to go ahead and pause the video and try number 3. Then when you come back, the solution should be here. All right, and here we have number three. So we're going to take a look at that. Once again, we had to solve A before we can find B. All right, let's go ahead and go to the next page. So example four through six, find the measure of the, each variable for each rhombus shown below. So this time we're dealing with these inside angles. So remember the diagonals are perpendicular bisectors, which means they create 90 degree angles all the way around. So I can say that 3G equals 90 I can also say that 10h equals 90, now allowing me to solve for both g and h. So g will give me 30, and when I divide by 10, that means h would be 9. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at 5. So this time, we're looking at the angle, or not the angle, sorry. Instead of the angles, we're looking at the diagonals themselves. Remember, they are perpendicular bisectors, which means those two are congruent, and so are these. So we'll talk about the outside edges here in a moment. But we can go ahead and say that y equals 4, we don't have to solve anything extra, and z equals 3. Great, so here we have to remember that this still does create a 90 degree angle, which means we have this right triangle. 
right? So we have this right triangle, and so now I have a 3, 4 for my legs, and I can find the hypotenuse. Remember, we do have our um, not special right triangle, sorry, Pythagorean triples. So a Pythagorean triple, we have a 3, 4, 5, so that means x would equal 5. If you forget about your Pythagorean triples, though, we can use the Pythagorean theorem. So 3 squared plus 4 squared will equal, what is that, x squared, which will give me 9 plus 16, which is 25. So when we take the square root of both sides, I get x equals 5. All right, and then remember, all the edges are congruent. So since I know what x is, I can say that w also equals 5. All right, go ahead and try number 6. So try number 6. We're working with those diagonals again. Um, pay attention. x does have a degree sign, so it's not the side. It's the degree. So we're going to pause the video. Try number 6. All right, and here we have it. So I started with x because since x was the degree, remember these are perpendicular to one another. So that's 90 degrees. And then I can find z because the diagonal gets cut in half. So therefore, z also equals 5. And then that allowed me to solve for a and y by using the Pythagorean theorem or the Pythagorean triple in order to find for that side length. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at 7 and 8. So find the measure of each angle or each variable for each rhombus shown below. So now we are dealing with a whole bunch of different angles. So these inside angles here are still all 90 degrees. So therefore, C equals 90 degrees. We don't have to solve anything there. And then let's recall that the diagonals bisect the angles. So this angle and these two angles down here are all congruent. And then across the diagonal this way, these angles are also all congruent. So. Luckily, we don't have to solve for anything. So if we start with the pink angles I um, highlighted, the 27. So that means B also equals 27, and so does F. So the angles are congruent across the way. All right, then if we take a look at the blue angles, we have 63 degrees. and so. Um, all of these angles are congruent. So in this section, they're congruent. And then in the other section, they're congruent. So I can say that D equals 63 and E equals 63. So with the angles, there's a lot of repeating angles. We just have to remember that they are bisected and that they're all congruent to one another. All right, let's go ahead and have you guys try number eight. So go ahead and pause the video. Try number eight. All right, and here we go again. So I circled the inside. Those are all 90. Um, my blue angles are congruent, and my pink angles are congruent. All right, let's go ahead and check out number 9. So we want to find the perimeter of the rhombus shown below, or off to the right. There it is. So remember, we have perpendicular lines, and then that these are all congruent to another. So that would mean this is 7 and this one's 24 because it's a perpendicular bisector. So 90 degrees and perpendicular. So once again, we can go ahead and do the Pythagorean theorem or if you see the Pythagorean triple. But I have 7 squared plus 24 squared is equal to, let's go ahead and just make the side x. So x squared. And remember, all the sides are the same. So it's going to be super nice and easy. So we have 49 plus 576 will give me x squared. Add those together, we'll get 625 equals x squared. And then we'll go ahead and take that square root. We get 25 equals x. So remember, all of the sides equal 25. So I can take 25 and multiply it by 4 and then I'll be able to find that perimeter because all the sides are the same length um, but you can definitely also do 25 plus 25 plus 25 plus 25 we'll get the same result so the perimeter for this problem will be 100 all right and let's go ahead and go to the last page with the kites 
So here, so the sides of a kite, a kite is a quadrilateral that has two pairs of consecutive sides that are congruent. So the consecutive sides, remember consecutive sides are right next to one another. So those two, and then my bottom two sides as well. All right, then my diagonals. One diagonal of a kite is the length, oops, I spelled that wrong, sorry. continue to spell it wrong, <laughs> is the length and height of the other. So we have the length here, and then the other one is the height. So the one that goes up and down is the height, the one that goes left and right is the length. All right, and then so at the bottom here there's a note about the angle, so there's uh, specifically things about the angles, but we're not going to be studying that this year. We're just going to be working with the sides and the diagonals. So let's go ahead and try 10 together, and I'll let you guys try 11. So find the measure of each variable for the kite shown below. So this angle measure here, since we have the length and the height, remember the height also always has to create that 90 degrees. So therefore, inside any of these angles, is going to be 90 degrees. So I'm going to say that A equals 90. All right, now we can go ahead and solve for the rest of the sides. So we do create these right triangles. So let's start with this. I'm going to highlight this smaller one, yellow. And I do know that B and C are the same. So once I find B, I know what C is. So I'm going to have 5 squared plus 5 squared equals B squared which will give me 25 plus 25 equals b squared. Go ahead and add those. We get 50 equals b squared. Take the square root of both sides. So 50 is not a perfect square, but we can go ahead and start to create um, a factor tree. So we have 25 times 2 and then 5 times 5. All right, so that would mean that b equals 5 root 2. So we had a two left over, so that stayed. And remember, C equals what B equals, so C also equals five root two. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at that larger triangle. Let's go ahead, let's highlight it here. I highlighted it in blue. So we have five, 12, and then E. Um, so we have five squared plus 12 squared equals E squared. So we have 25 plus 144 equals e squared, which is 169. And 169 is a perfect square, so e equals 13. All right, and remember opposite sides are the same, or I guess they're the consecutive sides are the same, so d equals 13. All right, so we're going to have to use the Pythagorean theorem here if you notice any um, special right tri sorry, not special right triangles, um, Pythagorean triples, feel free to use those. So go ahead and try number 11. All right, so I started with Z again because that was the angle, so all these angles equal 90 degrees. And then I found the smaller triangle and those, um, those consecutive sides are congruent. I drew the lines to show the congruency. And then same with H and Y, those are congruent. So once I found H, I knew what Y was. All right, let's go ahead and try number 12 together. So find the perimeter of the kite shown. So we're with this problem, we're gonna be using special right triangles and we're gonna be using Pythagorean theorems to help us, um, Pythagorean triples to help us find the side lengths. So remember, the two smaller sides are congruent and the two larger sides are congruent. So with this smaller triangle, I recognize I have a Pythagorean triple. I have a three, four, five triangle, which means this top right side is also five. All right, down below here, I recognize that I have a 90 and a 60, which means this has to be 30. So let's have a reminder of what the ratio is of a 30, 60, 90 triangle. We're going to have 1, 2, and 1 root 3. So I know that the 1 is at the 4. So for 2, because I need to find the side length, this side length is going to equal 8, because 2 times 4 is 8. So 2 times 4. 
and since the left part, so is the right part is equal to 8. So now I can go ahead and add all of those together. So 5 plus 5 plus 8 plus 8, which will give me 26. So we found the perimeter. All right, and that is the end of 9.4, the end of chapter 9 altogether. Um, if you have any questions, please be sure to ask your teacher and have a wonderful rest of your day.